Hey guys, um, we're gonna continue learning Marty Freeman's Inferno. Let's not waste any time. All right, last time we left off from the high D sharp. All right, this next section, uh, Marty starts, when he does it live, he starts from the F sharp. And all of these are, he's playing octaves, so. So it's F sharp, then G sharp to A, then to C, then to D, and he hits it once and slides off. Alright, this next section is gonna, gonna start out with the F major 7 arpeggio, starting from the 7th, and it's E. It's going to go up, so it's going to go E, F, A, C, and then it's going to repeat that, and then it's going to hit the F, uh, the octave on top with the pinky, and then go down the arpeggio. And all of those are going to be 16th notes, and... Uh, then he's going to go down to a tritone away to B major 7th and play a B major 7th arpeggio. Uh, and it's going to be the exact same pattern. So. Once again, all those are 16th notes. And then after that section, he goes back to the octave 8th notes pattern, but he starts on a G. So. Then A sharp to C, then to C sharp, back to C, then to F sharp, and then once again hit the G, but then hit it once and slide down. And then he plays uh, the section before where he plays the F sharp major 7th and the B major 7th arpeggios. It's the same pattern. All right, let's review that whole section slow. This next phrase is going to connect this to the next section of the song. And it starts out with a D, then to a B flat, to an A, to a G, then to an E flat, to a C, to a B flat, to G, then E, D, C, A. F, D, and then C, then back up to D, and then back up to F, then G, G sharp, and then to, it, it starts the next phrase. Now I'll show you how the rhythm goes. So. <clears throat> Once again. Let's review that whole section starting from the F sharp.
this next section is where the fun begins. Um, there's going to be a lot of arpeggios. I try my best in explaining it. Uh, the first arpeggio is going to be a D minor with the major seven, and it starts from the fifth chord tone, which is going to be A. It's going down to F, then to D, to C sharp, back up to D, to F, and then it repeats that the those notes again, and then when it it goes back to the A and does a pull up to F, then goes to the next arpeggio. Uh, so it's uh, and then it goes to this D flat major seven arpeggio. <clears throat> so it's uh, it's gonna be A flat. Starts from the fifth as well. Uh, A flat to F. To D flat to C back to D flat to F and then to A flat and then pulls off to F so it's kind of like the pattern previous to the previous arpeggio but it only cycles through the arpeggio once so together it's gonna be goes up a string set these next two arpeggios are gonna follow the same pattern as the previous two arpeggios and I'll show you that now um, the notes are gonna be C A flat G F and this outlines kind of um, F Dorian pentatonic without the sixth that's how I think of it and then the next arpeggio is gonna be an F major pentatonic without the sixth. So just move that A flat to an A, makes it major. So. And like I said, it the uh, those two, it's gonna be the pattern of the previous two arpeggios. So it's gonna end up sounding like this. These next two arpeggios are gonna be the exact same patterns. So I'll just go ahead and show you those. It's gonna be an A major pentatonic without the sixth. That's how I'm thinking about it. You can think about it, you can think of it as an A major with an add nine or add two, whatever you wanna think of it. So it's E, C sharp, B, and A. And the next one, it's gonna be like an A Lydian chord or arpeggio with the major seven, so it's gonna be D sharp, C sharp, A, and G sharp, and it's gonna follow the same pattern. So, all right, let's go through those series of arpeggios. to mention the the last two arpeggios are going to repeat uh, twice at the end so and then um, and that whole section repeats again so Just a reminder, those last two arpeggios do repeat. I'll just play those by themselves, so. All right, this next section really demonstrates how Marty's playing is very unique, exotic, and how he differs from other guitar players. I'm not gonna do too much explaining on this, this, this part, because we, it, this video would go way too long. So I'm gonna show you the notes of the scale and I also have the tab up so you can just follow along. I'll just play it slowly. Um, so it starts out with the E flat, your Joshi scale. I'll just show you the notes. It's a E flat, B, 
B flat to G flat to F to E flat to B B flat. Those are the notes that he's using right here. And the pattern that it's, uh, hits the E twice. Hammer on. And he holds out the B and B flat when he's playing those two notes. So it's a and kind of the similar a similar pattern so with the next group of notes and then finishes out like that so so let me repeat that so the next little lick is going to start from the B flat go to E flat to G flat up to G flat so, and triplets, so, and then F to B, so F to B twice, then down to B flat, then up to F, bends the F up half a step to G flat, then hits the G flat again. So that sec little section is So that whole E flat Hirojoshi scale lick is uh, I play it slowly Next section is gonna be uh, really Marty-ish. <laughs> Starts out with the G flat major seventh arpeggio, starting from the seventh, going up to the D flat. So it's gonna start from F and go up to the D flat. So it's gonna do that twice. Then to D, to E flat, to G flat, then to B flat. Then to G, uh, G bends up to an A flat. Then F to to A flat. Then bend F up to a G flat. Then E flat to D, and then bend the D up to a. And when you hit the D, you bend it up to an E flat. It's a real Marty thing to do where he hits the note, goes down half a step, and bends it back up to the same note. So. His next section is going to start with the Hirajoshi scale, but in G, it's going to be the same position as the previous one. Previous Hirajoshi scale, but it starts with the G, so it's the same interval, so I'm not going to be explaining the notes uh, that much. So it starts from G, pulls off to E flat, uh, then to D, then to back up to E flat, then D again, pulls off to B flat. So that whole pattern is. And then it does it again from D, uh, the same pattern. So, And it does that through the whole string set. So it's a. But when you get to the E flat on the third, or sorry, the fourth string, <laughs> he repeats that, those notes again. So it's. And then he just goes down the Hero Joshi scale without the pattern, just G, E flat, and then D. So I'm going to play that that whole uh, series of notes slow for you. So this next lick is very interesting because um, it's kind of like a G here Joshi scale with the uh, mixed in with the Hungarian minor scale.
G Hungarian minor scale. So we left off from D, so we're gonna go start from E flat, then to G, slide up from the A to B flat, and then play the D, then D flat, then to B flat. Yeah, and that's the flat five right there. Then back up to to the D flat to D. Then to the F sharp. Then to G. Then you're gonna go to the E flat. Then land on the D. So that's the rhythm. <laughs> All right, let me play that whole s section slow. So it's. series of notes are going to be from the G minor natural scale and they're going to be 16th notes majority of them and it's going to start from E flat hammer on and pull off from F to pull off to D uh, run up back to the F to G to B, <coughs> to A to B flat then pull off back to the G, then back up to the B flat, and then to C, D, and then uh, when C hit the D, this is where you do a 16th triplet hammer on pull off from the E flat to, to and, and then pull off to the C, then back up to the E flat. And then once you hit the F on the second string, you slide positions from F to G. Bam. There's your G minor from the root. And then you go up the G minor scale up to the D. And just like when you were at the octave below with this D, you do the 16th triplet from the E flat. And then you slide up to the F. And then you hit the F again, but you bend it up to a G. And then you go to the G and bend that up as well. To an A. So let me run through that whole scale, um, scale pattern. So it's The rhythm is very, um, <laughs> you're gonna have to practice with the track because it's very hard um, to nail the first time, so. <laughs> After you bend G to A, you, hit, you play F, go to E on the second string, and uh, you, you hit it twice on the second time you bend it up half a step to F. And then play D, E flat, then F, and then go back to E flat and bend that up to F. And then you play G to B to A flat, back to G, then hit the G an octave below to F, and then you do a strong vibrato on the B. From this position, you play an F, fully diminish arpeggio all the way to A flat. And then you hit the F sharp and uh, bend it half a step to <clears throat> G. We play that whole section, so it's. Oh, sorry. The next
next run it's going to be starting from C going up the G minor natural all the way up to A and then hit uh, play the A again and bend it half to B flat and then go to E and which E would be in G Dorian that's the way I'm thinking of it so you go up a G Dorian starting from the six all the way up to the C and then bend the C up to a D and then you play F <coughs> and then you play D flat and bend that up and it's kind of like a bluesy lick I think of it as like I'm in the B flat minor pentatonic uh, box so and then you bend that uh, D flat up again, a whole step again, and pull off to B flat. And then you bend A flat to B flat, and hit B flat on the top string. And then it goes to the next section. So let me play that again. I think I, I forgot to explain that after you played the, after you bend the, the C to D, D, I think he slides up to the D and hits the D again. So. This next section is going to be in it's going to switch time signatures. It's going to be 7 8. It's a really cool, really cool part of the song. I really, I really dig this part. All right, he starts from C, plays the F, and then the C at the octave goes half a step down to B, and bends that up to C, then plays the same uh, motif again. Play C to C sharp. And plays that motif again. Then plays C sharp to D. He bends it up to D. Then he switches position. And then he hammers on E flat back to D. Then C. And then D. E flat. B flat. Then slides down to a G. Then E flat to F. Then D to B flat, slides down to uh, F, and then D to E flat, to C, F, A, C, and then bends D to E flat, then releases it to D, back to D. So. Back to C, and then ends that phrase on D, and then the next phrase he starts from D again, and it goes up to, goes up the scale to F, back to D, E flat, and then kind of similar thing we did last time, slide uh, B flat to G. G, then hits the G on the second string, and plays A, then hits the D, well after he hits the A he goes back to F, then to D, then slides down to B flat. And then kind of the similar motif we did on the last phrase. And, but instead of going back to D, it's uh, C, B flat, A, and then B flat. Yeah. 
going to review the whole section. And when he does the bends at first, uh, he does his Marty double bend thing. So it's like... For those... For the for that phrase um, on the notation or tab, it doesn't. I didn't know how to <laughs> notate it, so it just shows one bend. But keep that in mind. So. concludes today's lesson. Hopefully you got something out of it. Hopefully I explained everything clearly and thoroughly. Um, I have the transcription on the screen like last video. Uh, so if I said something wrong, the transcription will be right and you can look off of that. And if uh, you want more stuff like this, then subscribe to my channel or comment. Let me know. And uh, thanks for watching.